It is once again time to take a look at some new PlayStation 4 game releases. We've got six new games coming tomorrow across a wide variety of different genres, from big budget, more marquee titles, to old school games making a comeback. All of that will be represented, and let's go over it. We've got six games in total. So let's kick it off with probably the biggest game release coming tomorrow, and that is the follow-up to Deck 13's The Surge in The Surge 2. Now, this is Deck 13's third title. First, they did Lords of the Fallen, then they did The Surge, and now we have The Surge too. Now, I think with Deck 13, their games have been progressively getting better. Of course, they are known for action Souls-like titles, and they always see direct comparisons to games from From Software, and I wouldn't say that Lords of the Fallen and The Surge were quite as good as games like Dark Souls or Bloodborne, but they were good games in their own right. Lords of the Fallen had some issues. I thought The Surge was a better game, and by the looks of it, The Surge 2 is really taking it up a level. I dig the visuals. It looks like it has some very stylish gameplay, and because of its more size sci-fi setting, I think it will attract a different audience than Souls does just because it has such a distinct setting from Souls. I think they got that element right. The game notes in a bid to survive, explore the sprawling, devastated Jericho City, fight ferocious threats in brutal, unforgiving combat, slashing and tearing the limbs off your opponents to steal their equipment. On the way to Jericho City, your plane is shot down by a mysterious storm and crash lands in the outskirts. You wake up weeks later in a derelict detention facility inside the city. Armor-clad soldiers and force martial law Robots are on a rampage and a dark, expanding nanostorm looms over the cityscape. You'll have to survive, and in a bid to survive, explore the devastated city of Jericho. Fight its numerous ferocious threats in brutal, unforgiving combat, slashing and tearing the limbs off your opponents to steal valuable equipment that will make you stronger. Strong enough to face the most fearsome, imposing foes lurking the city. You'll have to upgrade as well with an expanded arsenal of weapons, armors, abilities, implants, and drones to build your character in a bigger, more varied, and more ambitious world. The Surge 2 challenges you to survive and unravel its hidden secrets. The game will of course feature hardcore brutal melee combat, face deadly foes and colossal bosses, cut off parts of the enemy you want to loot, and then rich character progression and customization. At this point, Souls hasn't had a release in quite a while, although this week we have the release of two Souls-like games, so it's going to be interesting to see how The Surge 2 does against Code Vein, which is out later this week. I feel like they will attract two distinct audiences just because, again, those two games have very, very distinct presentation styles. The Surge 2 being catered more towards a Western audience, while Code Vein does have that Japanese anime look. The Surge 2 is out tomorrow. All right, next up, here's a very exciting release. Coming to the PlayStation 4 is Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. This is one of the older Star Wars games released all the way back in, I believe, 2003. So yes, it is a little dated at this point, but it was done by Raven Software, and it was an awesome game back in the day. The legacy of Star Wars Dark Forces and Star Wars Jedi Knight lives on in the intense first-person action of Jedi Outcast. As Kyle Katarn, agent of the New Republic, use your lightsaber and the full power of the Force to combat a new evil plaguing the galaxy. Wield over eight Force abilities, including the Jedi Mind Trick, Force Lightning, and Force Grip. Choose wisely from an arsenal of 13 weapons, including the Disruptor, Rifle, Thermal Detonators, Trip Mods, and Wookiee Bowcasters. Test your skills in 24 single-player missions and interact with legendary Star Wars characters such as Luke Skywalker and of course it was developed by the critically acclaimed Raven Studios and powered by the Quake 3 Arena engine. Visually it really doesn't hold up as well back in 03 it definitely had great visuals but now in 2019 this is one of those games that just it's been 16 years. You can only expect games to look so good but this is one that I feel like is going to have a lot of nostalgia attached to it and it was received really really well back in the day. It has an 89 on Metacritic for the PC version so it kind of goes to show how well it did back then and it comes to the PlayStation 4 tomorrow. Next up, we have a game release that I think is going to be a really big mix reception, and that is Contra Rogue Corps. Yes, Contra is back two years after the Alien Wars ended. The damn city erupts from the final battleground. From the midst of chaos, a group of scoundrels emerge. They might not be the typical heroes, but they're here to save the world or get rich trying. Featuring action-packed battles, customizable gear, gigantic bosses, and explosive multiplayer action, local and online co-op action for up to four players, four outrageous characters, each with their own weird style and colorful action. Attitude. Build over 100 weapons and augment your character with bionic body parts, earn in mission, character progression, weapon development, and customization ensure extensive replayability. Crazy new heroes and big bosses join the Contra universe. Now, Contra Rogue Core, just from a presentation standpoint, does look a little bit different than your typical Contra game, so I think ardent fans of this series might be a little bit off put by it initially, and that really does seem like to be the general reception online. Whatever the case may be, I still want a good game to come out of the return of Contra. 
However, Konami in general just has a very negative connotation attached to them right now, so I think there's gonna be some inherent skepticism attached to this game on top of the game being a little bit off-putting to some, but again, I'm hoping for the best with Contra Rogue Core as it's hitting the PlayStation 4 tomorrow. Next up, we have a very interesting title, and it's gonna be only $4.99, and that is Dreaming Canvas. Dreaming Canvas, you are free to choose your destination and explore it at your own pace. Meet interesting other travelers along your journey, listen to inspirational art quotes from famous painters, and locate canvases scattered around the landscape. When you find a canvas, get ready to paint the landscape of your dreams. It's a first-person adventure game where you can explore magical destinations, collect art inspirations, and paint pictures. Visually, the game employs a very interesting art style that I don't even really know how to describe it. Almost looks a little bit cell shaded but also has a variety of different presentation styles. Very excited to see how this one turns out, and given that it's being released at $4.99, I wouldn't expect an experience that has a colossal amount of depth attached to it. However, I do think this could be a rather interesting game as it is dropping tomorrow. Next up, we have Habroxia, which is a shoot 'em up coming at a relatively nice price point as well at $6.79. This one has you blast your way through a myriad of extraterrestrial incursions in an arcade style scrolling shooter. Pilot the ship through 15 levels featuring intense boss fights, rescue missions, shifting perspectives, and untold surprises. Customize your ship to enhance your abilities, unlock the three endless side modes, and save the galaxy from a series of sinister invaders. The game features 15 campaign levels, three distinct firing patterns, persistent ship upgrades, over 10 unique boss fights, over 50 different enemy types with multiple iterations, horizontal and vertical levels, and three endless side modes featuring distinct gameplay. Releasing at a relatively low price point, if you're into old school shoot 'em ups with a very old school presentation that must be noted over and over again. These days, we are seeing some shoot 'em up titles with better visuals. This one definitely looks like an old school Super Nintendo title or something like that. So just keep your expectations in line as far as that goes. But it looks like a pretty fun game if you're into shoot 'em ups, and it is out tomorrow. And lastly, we have Color Slayer. Color Slayer is a game that released on PC last month to hardly any fanfare, and it dropped at only a one dollar and ninety nine cent price point. So with these last three games, you'll notice is that they are incredibly cheap. I don't know how many people are going to check them out right away, but I do want to bring some attention to it. In the case of the PC release, it released on August 12th, and there is a literally no Steam reviews live right now. That is pretty shocking. But nonetheless, the game is coming tomorrow, and it notes race and slash your way forward in a color-based arcade game. Push your reflexes as you evade or slice color-coded enemies. Use the right colored sword to slash enemies as you avoid shielded ones and pick the right enemy after a color switcher. Quickly dispatch enemies to make a combo change and cut through bomb enemies to gain higher points. This is a game that based on the price point, it's also not going to have a lot of depth to it. I mean, a $2 game, we don't see a lot of new games being released at a $2 price point, but in the case of Color Slayer, maybe that will make it a more enticing purchase. I don't know if that $2 price point is only for PC. Maybe it will come at $5 on PlayStation 4 or whatever the case may be, but who knows? Maybe this is one that'll garner a little bit more traction on the PlayStation 4, but usually games find their audience on PC and then the console version is just looking to enhance that user base. It's usually never the other way around, but the case of Color Slayer, we'll see how it turns out, and if it is released at a $2 price point, well, it can't be all too bad. And that's gonna conclude this video. Again, as far as the fall release weeks have gone, this is probably the weakest day of game releases that we've seen thus far, although later this week, we do have a major game release in Code Vein. If you couple the Surge 2 with Star Wars Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, and Code Vein, this week is still pretty sizable, and you got Contra Rogue Core in there as well. Who knows, that might end up surprising a lot of people, but definitely let us know what games, if any, you're planning on picking up, or at the very least, games you're planning on keeping an eye on and maybe picking up on sale. We've got The Surge 2. That's a game that could end up surprising a lot of people, and I think that's one where if it is of quality, people are going to be streaming it, talking about it all over social media. That's generally how these Souls-like games go, and I could see it gaining a lot of traction that way. Star Wars Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, that's going to be a great release. We already know it's a great game, even though visually it's a little bit dated, given that it is 16 years old it's still gonna be a fantastic addition to the PlayStation 4 library. Contra is returning with Rogue Core. I'm skeptical on it, but I am hoping for the best. And then you do have three more quirky games rounding out the lineup in Dreaming Canvas, Habroxia, as well as Color Slayer. So that's gonna conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.